Hello, welcome to Meet Me at the Movies. Uh, Noel T. Manning II here. I'm hanging out with Thomas Manning, and uh, if you've ever watched this show, you know we talk about movies. It's in the title. I mean, but we do talk about other things as well. But but this is a sequel, Thomas. We, we promised it. We, we said it may happen last week, and it's happening. This is the Summer Movie Preview Part 2. Part 2. Can, what, what other language do you know, Thomas? You know any other languages? I mean, dos. Uh, that, that's, <laughs> okay. that's Spanish. So we got Spanish, we got French, we got English. Uh, I don't know what else. Uh, we'll, uh, that's we'll, we'll the get in of our linguistic knowledge. So, <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll bring in some other linguist, and we will, uh, we will uh, throughout the show, we might drop in a few other uh, variations of the number two. Today, I'm going to introduce to you my friend number two. Uh, this is part two, the Hi. sequel to our summer movie preview. Uh, and if you missed uh, last week's show, you can find that uh, online. Just look at the bottom of the screen uh, for the archived version of that. And if you're listening, uh, you can't really look at the bottom of your screen, and you, or you can, but you're not going to find it. So email us. You'll, info you'll just at, see your reflection in the, in the <laughs> phone monitor. But <laughs> That's yeah. right. So, so just email us, info at c 19 Dot TV, uh, and uh, we will make sure we take care of you and uh, help you to find uh, part one. Well, Thomas, uh, this is the one that, that you and I think are, are both looking forward to, maybe the most of, of all films. Uh, I know that it, it's definitely at the top of my list of films that I've been looking forward to for a while, ever since I heard uh, that they were, uh, were making this. Uh, I, I grew up an Indiana Jones fan. Uh, when I think about my, my summers growing up between, I'd say, you know, 10 and, and 18, 19 years old, there's a handful of films that stand out to me that even today I look back and think about films that remind me of summer. And the Indiana Jones franchise, uh, definitely one of those. And so when I heard that uh, the James Mangold was going to be uh, heading this thing, uh, and then uh, a, a person that I've interviewed a few times, Fidan Papi Mikel, uh, was going to be the cinematographer. <laughs> I was all in. I was in anyway, but you add those two to the mix, and I said, yes, I can't wait to be a part uh, of the uh, fifth film uh, in the Indiana Jones franchise. Uh, dive in and share some of your thoughts about, about this new entry uh, into the series. Yeah, and one more note, uh, commenting on what you said. I believe you've interviewed the underwater cinematographer for this film as well. Uh, I don't, I can't remember his name. Who was that? Uh, that was um, that was Seabrook, wasn't it? Was right. It? That is Ian Seabrook. There we go. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got I got a double whammy there. I just need to get uh, Fidan, and I need to get uh, Harrison Ford, and then I'd be in good shape, man. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, but you, you grew up with the original Indiana Jones trilogy in the 80s. And then when I was, I believe, eight or nine years old is when Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out. So about that time is when I was old enough to go back and catch up on the Spielberg films. And uh, so I watched all three of those leading up to Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I think you and me are both in the camp that are defenders of the 2008 film uh you know i i know that one caught a lot of flack from a lot of people but we both had a great time and even if you know parts of it may not hold up as well compared to like raiders of the lost ark and last crusade i am still always going to hold a special place in my heart for that one uh just with the memories as the first indiana jones film i saw in theaters and um but because i've seen people talking about this one Oh, James Mangold is going to redeem the franchise. This this franchise has a stain on it. But for me, I don't think it needs redeeming. Um, but I am still very, very excited to see uh, just another chapter. And uh, we got a great cast working with here. In addition to Harrison Ford, of course, a great uh, a lot of character actors around him. We got Phoebe Waller Bridge, uh, then Mads Mikkelsen, Antonio Banderas is going to be in there. And uh, based on some of the trailers, I know they use some de-aging technology, and I know that can be hit or miss, but just based on a few of the clips we've seen, it looks like probably some of the best examples of this type of visual effects that we've seen yet. Um, and hopefully they use it sparingly enough to where it doesn't become too much of a distraction, and it's something that adds emotionally to the story, but isn't just a you know gimmick, just something that 
thrown in there for the sake of showing off new technology. But from what I understand, Harrison Ford is very impressed with what they were able to do to weave that into the more emotional narrative side of things. So. Yeah, yeah, the, the de-aging in the trailers absolutely kind of blew me away because we all know what a young Harrison Ford looked like. We all we all know what he looked like as Indiana Jones. And so uh, you've got to recapture that perfectly for fans. And the trailers did that. And I, I was blown away. I said, wow, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm along for this ride. So uh, I'm excited. Uh, and, if, and if you're familiar with Mangold, I mean, he did Logan, which is one of my uh, favorite of the superhero film franchise uh, or superhero genre of, of any of those films that I've seen going back. I mean, it's at the top of my list. There was so much um, about that that I loved. He also did Ford versus Ferrari, and he's done so many other things. And so I'm with you, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It worked for me because it was uh, the, the time period that it was set in, it, it clicked. And, and also there's part of that uh, nostalgia, and then there's also part of that uh, you know, seeing uh, a film with you in the theaters for the first time in this franchise, there's a special connection for me there as well. So this is uh, definitely top of my list, uh, and that is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, June 30th. Any other thoughts before we move on to June 7th? Uh, I think basically I'm just, I'll be there day one or hopefully Hopefully, even a week before, hopefully we get a good screening coming in through here. So, yeah, I'm very excited about Dial of Destiny. Awesome. Well, if you want to uh, look at uh, June 7th, uh, this is a film that's a cross between a Girl's Trip and Bridesmaid. Uh, this is uh, an Asian version of this. Uh, Ashley Park in this. Uh, also, uh, Stephanie Sue in this from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, it's just a wild and crazy uh, adult comedy. We talked about one of those last week, but if you want to check out a Joyride, that'll be uh, available on July the 7th. Anything else you want to add about that? Uh, yeah, I just think it is really awesome to see continued pr- progression of you know Asian American representation in uh, in Hollywood films, and um, you know I think we uh, obviously last year we saw everything everywhere all at once, which connected with a lot of people from you know not only the Asian American audience but people all around the world and across all different cultures and ethnicities within the United States. Uh, but yeah, I think it's awesome to see them kind of expanding that into multiple genres and this one very raunchy looking comedy uh but it also looks like it has um, you know some heartfelt uh you know family family messages in it not family in the sense of take your 10 year old to see it but you know family is once you get to like 17 18 and are continuing to learn more and mature about, <laughs> about life it just i think from what i understand that's kind of some of those you know thematics they're working with here so yeah it looks it looks like a lot of fun Absolutely. Uh, and also, uh, looking like a lot of fun, Thomas, uh, is another top film on our list uh, of, of must see films that we're going to be checking out on July the 12th. Uh, we've not been waiting for this one as long as we have uh, the next installment of Indiana Jones, but we have been waiting for, for a little while for this part one of a, uh, another part two <laughs> Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. That's right, yes, yeah, so we had Mission Impossible Fallout back in 2018, and this is actually going to be the first Mission Impossible of Dead Reckoning. This is going to be the first one I see in theaters. Uh, I don't know if you realize that or not. No! I, I know, I, I know. Wow. <laughs> Around, yeah, I had no yeah. idea. I had no it, idea. It wasn't until after Fallout came out that I really got on board the, you know, the bandwagon and started catching up on the franchise. I'd seen most of them on DVD before and home video, but um, now I'm just really looking forward to see Tom Cruise um, you know, put his life on the line to entertain the audience <laughs> on the big screen. <laughs> you know, just I think the big stunt set piece in part one is. He's motorcycling off a cliff into a parachute jump. Uh, there's also <laughs> a fist fight on top of a train that was done pretty practically, from what I understand. I don't know how much of it, I don't know like, how fast the train was going, that kind of thing. But I know they filmed it as practically as possible without you know, hurting anybody. Um, and <laughs> then Ethan Hunt, he's trying to save and possibly avenge his friends. We know how dedicated he is to his friends and his family around him so 
you know, what more could one ask for from a cinematic experience? I, I just, we got the first teaser a year ago, and then we had to wait another year for another look at it. But I love the way the teasers and trailers have been constructed, where it's pretty much the same shots they're showing you, but they're just kind of switched around in different orders to kind of give you a different idea of where they are in the context of things. But you, beyond a few of the money shots, we really don't know a lot. And from what I understand, it's going to be like a three-hour film. So I'm going into it knowing very little about plot other than Tom Cruise wants to save his friends and, <laughs> and save the world at the same time stuff along the way. So yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you, man. This is, uh, I, I love high action and especially when Tom Cruise is attached to it. And this franchise has continued to find ways to get better for me. I remember the first uh, mission impossible. I, I, I liked it. I didn't love it. Uh, and it, it, uh, continue to to get better and, and I found ways to love it even more and talking about the train sequence there is a fight on the train if you go back to the original as well and so I think this I think this is almost paying homage to that just a little bit of going hey remember where we came from so uh, truly looking forward to a mission impossible a dead reckoning part one uh, and that does come out in theaters on July the 12th well Thomas we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some uh, some dolls. We're going to talk about uh, a bomb, and, uh, and and maybe even a few other things uh, as we wrap up uh, some of our previews for uh, the summer of 2023. So hang around right here on Meet Me at the Movies at C19 TV, and if you're listening to the radio and podcast version, WG WG and WG WG.org. Stick around. <laughs> I can show the number Two. in many ways. Look and sing along and let's learn today. I can show the number Two. in many ways. For many kids, ways. just showing up to school is a challenge. Staying through graduation is even harder. So at Communities and Schools, we do just what our name says. Our staff brings a community of resources to meet each student's needs right in their school. Doing whatever it takes to keep kids focused so they see what we see, a bright future. Join in at communitiesandschools.org. Hi, I'm Nikki Bliss Carroll, your host for Cleveland Connections, the show that explores what's happening at Cleveland Community College. Join us as we sit down with members of faculty and staff to discuss programs of study, upcoming events, and other exciting campus news. We'll have a new show for you each month on C19 TV, or you can stream us online at c19.tv. Tune in and connect with Cleveland Community College on Cleveland Connection. Won't you come and meet me at the movies? Won't you come and watch a... Hello, welcome back to Meet Me at the Movies. Noel T. Manning the second here, hanging out with uh, Thomas Manning. We're chatting about... Uh, the uh, summer movie preview part <laughs> that's uh, as, uh, part I am Groot so that's uh, that's part two from from Groot language not, uh, this not to is, be confused with Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning part one or, right. or Fast X part one not to be confused it's, with that at all so that's right now it is a, it is a summer of uh, every summer is a summer of sequels and franchise films but the next two films, we'll, we'll, we'll call it a double feature, Thomas. Uh, neither one of these uh, have anything else attached to them except a little bit of history uh, and, and a little bit of something from Toyland. So I'll let you dive into this double feature that you're going to check out on uh, July the 21st. That is correct. So first we'll talk about Oppenheimer. And supposedly Nolan and company have found a way to recreate an authentic visual representation of nuclear explosion without, of course, the radiation, which is an important thing to you know leave out if you're yes. making a film. Uh, yes. And also, also part of the film is going to be in black and white. Uh, it's, it's using IMAX black and white analog photography for the first time in cinematic history. 
And this is also Nolan's first film with Universal. Uh, he, he'd been with Warner Brothers for about 20 years, and then they kind of went through a breakup after Tenet, and he had issues with the way Warner Brothers was distributing things during the pandemic and their deal with HBO Max and all that. So this is him with a studio. He, he got a blank check and had a list of demands of, this is the budget I want. This is the cast I want. This is, you know, I want final cut on everything. Universal was like, yeah. You, you can do it. So he's making a three-hour historical epic, and uh, it's got just an incredible cast from, uh, of course, uh, Killian Ke Murphy as Robert Oppenheimer. Also, Matt Damon is in the film, playing a big role. Uh, I know Florence Pugh and Robert Downey Jr., and I, I could sit here and talk for the rest of the show just about this cast, but uh, I just the trailers that have been teased for the past year um i think you know this and mission impossible dead reckoning have both been marketed very well in the sense that it gives you an idea of the atmosphere and the general energy of the movie um without actually revealing all the you know all the money shots on everything and without giving away too much emotionally of what you're going to see transpire so uh, absolutely looking forward to Oppenheimer. Uh, so, uh, the people have had this debate. You see Oppenheimer or, B or Barbie first on July 21st. <laughs> so, I'm going to go see Oppenheimer, this you know three-hour drama first, and then follow that up with Barbie for dessert. Uh, Barbie is you know, directed by Greta Gerwig, and I'll, I'll let you kind of tee us off here a little bit and talk about uh, this kind of fantastical journey into uh, a reality that is kind of parallel to ours. I, I don't, I just, <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to talk about Barbie, but. <laughs> well, you know, it, it it honestly is, I mean, based on, you know, a, a Mattel uh, toys, dolls, and, and all of the, um, the extensions of that universe from a, from a toy land standpoint, bringing it to life into live action and you got like you said great names attached to it ryan goslin also attached to this you got harley quinn showing up with a sledgehammer i mean you just never know what's going to be happening uh, in this it, it, it's 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 definitely going to be a hit uh, it's going to have a different kind of audience for sure uh, I, I don't think that most people who are going to be drawn to the oppenheimers are going to be drawn to the barbies unless uh, they love variety because the, on this day, on, on July 21st, it is definitely variety with these two films. One, you can start probably talking about from, from an Oscar standpoint, from you know, cinematography, from production design, from other things, and that's Oppenheimer. And then another one is just uh, um, just an escape film, and that's, that's Barbie. And so I think it's really uh, going to be interesting to see what we have here, and there's so much... Um, detail put into play for Barbie uh, from from costumes to set designs um, and, and to uh, props all of those things are going to be modeled after the original toys and it's going to be really interesting to see how this comes to life I, I'm, I'm excited to see it it's not one that uh, typically I would say I, I want to see a Barbie film but uh, because of the cast, because of the uh, director, and because of the kind of tongue-in-cheek way they're going to explore this, I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited to see what will unfold with, uh, with Margot Robbie as Barbie. Yeah, and if you want a really interesting triple feature, go watch Oppenheimer and then Barbie and then come home and fire up the Lego movie on the Blu-ray player. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, I, I did not have this on the list, Thomas, but I do want to mention um, quickly on July 28th, uh, Haunted Mansion comes out and talk about another uh, kind of extension of different universes. You know, Disney has found ways to turn all sorts of things into movies, including rides. You know, we saw that back in 21 with, with Jungle Cruise, and uh, we've seen it with Pirates of the Caribbean, and now we're going to be seeing seeing it come to life. Yeah, Rosario Dawson's going to be starring uh, in a, a haunted mansion, a live-action version of this, with a lot of other uh, names attached to this as well. Uh, there was an adaptation in 2003 with Eddie Murphy, and this one's, of course, expanding that a whole whole lot more, especially with the effects. 
Yeah, I've actually never seen the Eddie Murphy film, but I do remember riding the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney World when I was like eight years old and closing my eyes the whole time. Uh, and I was riding, <laughs> was riding with my friend who was a couple years older than me at that point, and uh, he never let me hear the end of it because I was just, <laughs> I was scared to my wit's end. And, um, and then he was like, Thomas, you know, th- none of it's real. It's fine. I was, I was like, hey. I'm eight years old, all right? Let, <laughs> let, let me wallow in my, you know, horrified misery here for a little bit. Yeah, you, you, you'd still be that way today, man. Don't don't yeah, say it. Yeah, don't blame it on being eight. Yeah, You're yeah still, and, and 15 years later, it would be the same story. So. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Well, well Thomas, uh, in, in the summer, we really can't talk about summer without – having a disaster film attached to it in, in some form or fashion. That's one of the things I love. I'm like, okay, watch the disaster film this summer. Watch the disaster film. And, and we've got that coming up a little bit later in the summer, and uh, we've got uh, Jason Statham uh, in a sequel, uh, a part du. Uh, talk, about, uh, talk about this film, man. Yeah, so The Meg to the Trench. Uh, this is going to be directed by Ben Wheatley. Uh, the first one was directed by John Turtletob, who Turtletob, you don't, if, unless you're like like us and keep up with the film industry very closely, you wouldn't know his name, but you know so many of the movies he's directed, the National Treasure films, uh, you know, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, uh, Cool Runnings, all those are Turtle Top movies. He's very much a, I guess, a populist type filmmaker, and he and he was a great choice for the Meg, just making this big budget disaster film that had only one intention, and that's to entertain and have you just you know check your brain at the door leave it all aside <laughs> just, just hold on <laughs> just, and just watch jason statham go up against not one but two <laughs> massive just megalodon sharks uh, that's right and so you know now coming in uh wheatley um is a really interesting filmmaker he did uh, free fire the with brie larson a few years ago and he's done a handful of other things uh he's done some great work in kind of prestige tv and uh, so I'm interested to see his take on this this mythos that they've established with this universe. Um, so I don't really know what more they can do from a standpoint of is it just going to be a bigger shark than the last time, <laughs> uh, or is it going to be like you know a dozen bigger sharks? But regardless, <laughs> um, I just love to watch Jason Statham and you know the rest of the crew stand their ground against whatever's thrown at them. So, yeah, I'm very excited for the trench. Yeah, I am as well. The, the first one was a uh, was really kind of a surprise hit, uh, 2018. Uh, I mean, they knew it would do uh, have moderate success, but it, it actually uh, went beyond that and, and found kind of this cult following. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, that is uh, the Meg 2, uh, the trench, uh, August the 4th. Well, Thomas, we've got about four minutes. Uh, anything else you want to make sure you cover before we uh, wrap things up for our summer uh, preview 20, uh, 2023 part two? Uh, we can briefly mention uh, Heart of Stone that's coming out August 11th, and this is a uh, Netflix action spy thriller starring Gal Gadot. And uh, I hadn't heard a lot about this prior to to a couple weeks ago, but I saw some behind the scenes trailer stuff and uh, it looks like they're really emphasizing practical effects and uh, you know, big, big grand scale stunts. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then the following week, August 18th, we have Blue Beetle. And this is going to be the first DCEU film with a Latino lead. Um, and the, the main character played by uh, Zolo Maradena. This guy is actually younger than me. Um, <laughs> and at the time we're recording this, he's about to turn 22 years old. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool to see someone that young, you know, carry a superhero film on their back. Um, and there's, I, I guess you've probably seen the trailer for this, where there's a shot in the trailer where, um, so the Blue Beetle character, there's basically this ancient alien biotech relic that attaches to the main character and grants him this exoskeleton and gives him these powers. And so there's a shot in the trailer where the exoskeleton like engulfs him and it's almost like a horror comedy where his entire family sees it happening and they're just freaking out as these insect legs are growing out of his back. 
Um, and so that, that, that and, happened to your sister yeah, yesterday. Yes, it did. It did. And it's something, something that we can very much relate to here in the Manning household. Uh, but if they can find a way to keep that that general tone throughout the film and balance that, then I think this is one that uh, I could really enjoy. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. It was a film that was initially designed, uh, and uh, they were proposing it just for a streaming service. Uh, but they they have so much faith in what this is going to do. They said, let's get it out there uh, into the theaters. Let's see what it does at the box office. So I'm glad they did. It's, it's nice to see them choose to do something like that instead of saying, ah, oh, let's just take it to streaming. There's some great stuff going directly to streaming. There's one I do want to make sure I mention. I've got a, a chance to mention that. Uh, I was a big fan of Extraction with Thor. You know, Thor start, started this, brought his hammer, and, you know, uh, he took care of business. Uh, it was a, um, a, a Russo Brothers production, uh, and, I'm, and I'm talking about Chris Hemsworth. Um, and uh, he's back uh, on a Netflix um, film, another sequel, uh, Extraction 2. Uh, and you and I both loved the action sequences in that first one, especially uh, an amazing one take. There's another one take in this one. A, what, a 20-minute one take, Thomas, uh, in this particular film? Is that right? Yeah, in the first one, it was like an 11-minute winner, and this one is going to be a 21-minute winner. And uh, these films are directed by Sam Hargrave, who was a stunt per, a stunt director, second unit director on uh, a lot of the Rooster Brothers films. So that's where he's coming in, stepping behind the camera, similar to what we saw with like Chad Stahelski and, uh, and David Leach, the Matrix guys, John Wick guys coming in. So I, it's really cool to see stunt performers get a chance to you know help an entire film. Absolutely. Uh, the film is uh, written by uh, Joe Russo. It is going to be distributed by Netflix, so you can check that out uh, for home delivery. Uh, and that date is June the 16th. Well, we really appreciate you guys spending time with us right here as we've been talking uh, summer movie previews. We hope you've enjoyed uh, both of the episodes. Uh, and again, if you want to check out uh, the first episode where we looked at the first part of the summer, uh, look at the bottom of your screen if you're watching us on uh, TV, uh, and you will see that link to that. And uh, if you if you are listening to us uh, through WGWG and WGWG.org, uh, and you want to know where to find that, just uh, email us, info at c 19 TV. And you can always find uh, the shows, uh, all of the shows from C19, just by going to C19.tv uh, and check those out. Uh, and uh, the vast array of others uh, by watching us uh, in Cleveland County, uh, C19. We really appreciate your time. Always, it's always good to spend time with you. We, uh, we enjoy it. Uh, we have a blast. And we just thank you for continuing to support us, Thomas. Any final thoughts before we wrap things up? Yeah, well, I mean... Already missing Greg Tillman, but I hope retirement is treating you well, my sir, my good sir. My sir, I don't know where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> good sir, I hope retirement is treating you well. And, uh, yeah, um, enjoy some time for the rest of us. So. Yeah, and, and we'll be, we'll be uh, hopefully uh, being able to bring uh, Greg back on now that he's got a little bit extra time. He's going to need something to do. And uh, <laughs> we're going to, uh, I think, you know, once we get back in the studio, uh, maybe later on this summer, uh, I think Tim's going to actually be on the Tim Cam, so so there there may be some changes a brewing there too. So uh, for for all of us right here at C19 TV and the Meet Me at the Movies cast and crew, we thank you, we appreciate you, and until next time, that's a wrap. You, until we meet again, next time we see you, we'll gladly fill you in. We'll tell about the happy and the sad ones We'll talk about the good ones and the bad ones Many films to view Till we meet again